What happens when the mock wheel basalt gets a thousand watt motor and a full suspension? Meet the Obsidian. So is there a new king when it comes to camping and hunting bikes? Let's take a ride and find out. Hey everyone, I'm John with Electric Bike Report. We'll go out for a spin shortly, but first I want to remind you to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our future content. We have new e-bike reviews coming out a couple times every week, so stay tuned and let us help you find one you'll love. When it comes to the Obsidian, we think this bike is set up very well for all kinds of adventures, and that's primarily because of the motor and suspension that I mentioned. That 1000 watt rear hub motor is made by Machwheel and it packs some serious power, plus it uses a torque sensor so it can give you more power when you pedal harder. In my experience, this bike can easily reach speeds of around 30 miles per hour with the maximum level of pedal assistance. A powerful motor is one thing we look for in an all-terrain e-bike, but a full suspension is another really important feature. The Obsidian comes with a suspension fork up front with 130 millimeters of travel and a rear shock with 50 millimeters of travel, and that's the uh, medium size of the AOY36RC model from DNM. The combination of those two makes off-road riding significantly more comfortable than it would be on a hardtail, and makes it not only possible but also enjoyable to ride over really rough and rocky terrain. Another one of the Obsidian's defining elements is something that it shares with a handful of Mach Wheel's other e-bikes, including the Basalt that I mentioned. This group is what the brand refers to as Power Station e-bikes because they all include high capacity, 48 volt, 941 watt hour batteries that can be connected to an optional power inverter, so you can use the bike's battery to power other devices. You can also add in solar panels, so you can keep the battery charged, no matter how far you get from civilization. One thing to be aware of with that 1000 watt motor, the Obsidian doesn't meet any of the standard class 1, 2, or 3 designations, even though it might come with a class 2 sticker on the seat tube. A downside to that is that it's less likely to be street legal without registration, depending on where you live. We recommend studying up on your local laws, but on the plus side, the bike is great for off-roading anyway, and the fact that it's unclassified also means that it's not limited to 20 or 28 miles per hour. But let's dive in a little deeper and take a look at all the bike specs and components. Starting off the three color options, we have the desert camo option here, but there's also a yellow paint job with black trim and a black paint job with red trim. There's an 8-speed Shimano Altus drivetrain on the bike with a 44-tooth chainring and a 12 to 32-tooth cassette. The brakes are the Tektro E350 hydraulic system with two piston calipers and 180 millimeter rotors. And the Obsidian comes with 26-inch by 4-inch Chaoyang Big Daddy tires with hippo skin puncture protection and some chunky off-road tread. There are front and rear fenders, as well as a custom mock wheel saddle, and an integrated dual LED headlight with a rechargeable tail light. Up in the cockpit, there's a pretty simple setup with 720 millimeter handlebars with ergonomic grips that have a little gel bump in the palm area. We weren't a huge fan of those for off-roading, but they're something you can replace pretty easily. The throttle lever and control panel are on the left bar, and the Shimano Altus below the bar shifter is on the right. And then the display is centrally mounted, and that's a custom full color LCD that looks really nice and puts all your ride data right where you need it. But that about wraps it up. Let's move on and see how the bike did in our testing. We tested the Obsidian's Tektro hydraulic disc brakes by pedaling the bike up to 20 miles per hour, and then we measured how far it took to stop after we hit the brakes. We took the data from three separate tests and arrived at an average stopping distance of 22 feet 7 inches. I gotta say we were pretty impressed here. 
This Tektro system shows up on a lot of different bikes we review, and its performance definitely varies from bike to bike. We expected a longer stopping distance considering the full suspension here, but this result was notably better than the current average of 23 feet 3 inches when compared to other all-terrain and fat tire bikes we've data for. Even going by feel, these brakes felt great. They had really solid stopping power, good modulation, and fast response time. So we're definitely comfortable saying these brakes are safe and effective. Let's go out for a spin on the Obsidian for our speed test. I rode the bike in each pedal assist setting to see how fast it could go, and I also tested the throttle to see how quickly it could reach 20 miles per hour. Let's see what happened. All right, we are here on the Mach Wheel Obsidian to do a speed test, and I'm pedaling here with no help from the motor, going kind of right around 10 and a half miles per hour or so. Let's bump up to PAS1. And I can feel that motor kick in nice and fast. Makes a big difference. Boy, getting a lot more speed, a lot of power, even just in PAS1. And I'm shifting up, I think about four gears there. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna try to maintain a casual or consistent, sorry, level of effort because of the torque sensor here. But with a, I would say casual to moderate level of effort, Going pretty comfortably here, kind of right around 17 miles per hour. Uh, that's PS1, so let's go up to PS2, see what happens there. Definitely feeling a little bit more speed. Uh, going kind of right around 19 miles per hour here. And let's bump up to, whoop, PS3, there we go. I've noticed that like, if you kind of back off and the motor catches up to you, it uh, does kind of hang there and slow you down for a little bit. But let's see, PS3, shift up to about seventh gear here. And we're going pretty comfortably right around 21 and a half, maybe 22. Let's go up to PS4. All right, that's nice. I mean, we, I feel like I'm flying right now. This is great. Going kind of right around 24 miles per hour, 24 and a half maybe. And then let's go up to PS5 and finish things off with the full thousand watts. And uh, I'm in eighth gear here, so kind of wish there was one more gear but still pretty easy to get here right around 27 and a half, 28 miles per hour. Uh, and then with a little after extra effort, you know, we could go even faster. So that is our speed test on the Mach Wheel Obsidian. All right, we are here on the Mach Wheel Obsidian to do a throttle acceleration test from zero to 20. And we'll start in three, two, one, go. A nice steady power increase here and there we are so i tried to keep a pretty consistent level of effort throughout this test so that we could get a good idea of the differences in power between each setting that was especially important since this bike uses a torque sensor and it could change its output if i pedaled harder I rode with no pedal assistance to get sort of a baseline for the test and hit a max of 10.6 miles per hour there. This bike weighs 81 pounds and with those fat tires, it's not super fun to pedal on its own, but with the motor activated, PAS1 brought me all the way up to 17.2 miles per hour. So there is a ton of power even in that lowest setting. The differences in speed and power were nice and consistent moving up from there. I hit 19.5 miles per hour in PAS2, 22.1 in PAS3, 24.4 miles per hour in PAS4, and then I got a little extra power from PAS5, that brought me up to 28.3 miles per hour. That was all with a moderate level of effort, and I actually found outside of this test that if I pedaled really hard, I could exceed 30 miles per hour. 
The throttle speed is limited to 20 miles per hour as the bike ships, and you could see pretty quick acceleration from that test. But I liked that the motor wasn't too punchy with the throttle, and I also like that the throttle speed could be adjusted in the bike settings menu. So overall, the Obsidian's power is pretty well distributed. I wouldn't mind seeing the output in PAS1 brought down a little so that there wasn't quite such a huge jump going from no pedal assistance up to that lowest setting. I like that there's so much speed and power here, but I also would like the ability to moderate that a little more in really rough off-road situations. That said, I think Adrenaline Junkies are really gonna love this setup. We tested the Obsidian's range in two different tests by riding in PAS1 and PAS5 until that huge 941 watt hour battery was spent. Using the highest level of pedal assistance, we traveled 33 and a half miles on a single charge, and with the lowest setting, we hit 60.4 miles. So ultimately, that's a really solid and respectable distance considering how powerful that motor is, but things get a little messy when comparing those results to others from similar e-bikes we've tested. There just simply aren't a huge number of e-bikes with 1000 watt rear hubs and torque sensors out there, so I ended up doing a comparison within the whole category of all-terrain bikes. Some of those have less powerful rear hub motors while others use mid-drives, some use torque sensors, and others have cadence sensors. So with that in mind, the Obsidian looks pretty average on paper, but in reality, it was able to keep pace with quite a few e-bikes that had greater battery capacity in relation to their motor size. We usually like to see a one-to-one -one ratio between those two things, and the Obsidian is a little light on battery capacity, but it's a really efficient system. To illustrate that, we expected our PAS5 test to last a little under an hour based on its motor and battery specs and end up with around 26 miles of range. Our real world test showed a 79% increase in time and a 29% increase in distance over those expectations. Our tests were done on paved bike paths, but off-road riding is more demanding on the motor and battery, so your results will likely vary. But either way, the Obsidian should keep you moving for a pretty serious amount of time before you'll need to recharge. As always, we tested the Obsidian's hill climbing ability at Hellhole Trail, where the path is a super steep 12% average grade. Justin rode the bike up the path using just the throttle, and again in PAS5, so I'll let him share his experiences. We are on the Mockwell Obsidian doing the throttle test on Hell Hole. And right out of the gate, I can say it's a very comfortable bike. I actually appreciate that rear squish, even climbing hills. So up this hill, it's powering through pretty good, down to 14, 13. It's kind of holding 13 pretty steady. So it's a big, it's a big bike, has some weight to it, but kind of powering up this hill. The motor. It's about average for a rear hub, I would say. I'll let you listen to it through this section. Yeah, so held, I mean, the lowest it dropped to just for a split second was 13. So this is gonna have pretty good results here. Um, and I can say it's definitely gonna be a hill charger, even on throttle. So excited to see what it does on pedal. And as we get to the top, let's, We'll go to the tape and see how it did overall. Okay, here we are. The pedal test with the Mockle Obsidian. And we'll say right now, it kind of feels like I'm flying up the hill. I'm, you know, 18, 19 miles per hour, soft pedaling in a pretty high gear. Down to 16, 15 shift. No, I didn't necessarily need to. 14. And this, I have a feeling it's going to have a pretty good time. I'll let you listen to the motor through this section. Yeah, I held 15 miles per hour through that last punchy section. And the motor, it's fairly quiet. Um, pretty impressed with that so far. Pretty impressed with the engagement, how quiet it is. And if you're looking for something to charge up a hill, 
I feel like this one's gonna do pretty well. Um, so let's get to the top and check out the results. So I'm not gonna bury the lead here. The Obsidian is one of the best hill performing e-bikes we've hill tested. Using just the throttle, Justin made the trip in a minute and seven seconds and an average speed of 16.2 miles per hour. He was able to cut that down to a minute and one second with an average of 17.8 miles per hour when pedaling in PAS5. So again, our pool of similar e-bikes to compare to is pretty small, but those bikes also did really well in this test. There were a few that made it up the hill faster, but in most cases they had some kind of distinct advantage, like a thousand watt mid-drive motor that sort of multiplied Justin's effort instead of just adding to it, or even two hub motors that we really haven't seen anything with a single motor come super close to. Bottom line, the thousand watt motor on the Obsidian here beat out the other thousand watt rear hubs we've tested, and this bike can clearly handle just about any hill without breaking a sweat. Let's go out for one more ride and talk about the Obsidian's ride quality. We'll go over the main elements and then we can wrap things up back here. All right, we are here on the Mach Wheel Obsidian to show you what it's like to ride and talk about its ride quality. Uh, let's see, this is Mach Wheel's newest e-bike, which is a uh, full suspension, fat tire, all-terrain e-bike. Has a pretty upright riding position. Um, of course, that depends a little bit on your height, and I'm 5'11", so kind of right in the middle of the recommended height range, which is 5'6 to 6'8". Uh, but for me, very comfortable, very natural feeling, um, and not a ton of adjustability here. You get about 5 inches in your saddle height uh, with the seat post, but with the standard style stem, uh, not a ton of adjustment to your uh, handlebar height or reach. There's a bit of a curve to the handlebars, so you could loosen up that stem and rotate those a little bit for, for some adjustment, but for the most part, what you see is what you get. Uh, but the full suspension here, kind of defining element of this bike, very comfortable, very smooth. You get 130 millimeters of travel on the front fork, and then the rear shock, uh, not entirely sure what the travel is on that, but we can talk about that back in the studio. Uh, again, very smooth, very nice. The tires here are 26 inch by 4.0. Those are Chaoyang Hippo skin tires uh, with a nice off-road tread pattern. So with that, with, you know, really good stability on the bike with the tread pattern, you got good traction for riding in loose terrain. And then, you know, if you want a little more cushion or if you need a little bit more grip, you could air those tires down a little bit to, uh, to do both of those things. Hello, Quail. And uh, let's talk about that motor as well. That is a thousand watt rear hub motor and, you know, plenty of power there, packs quite a punch, but uses a torque sensor to engage and I find the initial engagement pretty quick. I'm going to demonstrate the re-engagement, which I think uh, could use a little bit of work. But so coasting here, uh, hitting the brakes, slowing down, and then I'm going to move the pedals now. So that's really about a full turn of the cranks before I really felt that. And now you can adjust that a little bit in the settings menu, uh, which I definitely recommend doing. But in any case, let's go back to the studio and talk a little bit more. So in general, the Obsidian's ride quality is great. This bike is big, it's comfortable, and it's powerful enough to handle just about anything you can throw at it. It has a total payload capacity of up to 400 pounds, so it can handle larger riders. And again, the recommended height range is five foot six to a whopping six foot eight. I found the standover height of about 45 inches or 115 centimeters to be a bit on the tall side, but otherwise the bike was really comfortable. The suspension here was one of the best features of the bike. I reviewed the Basalt earlier this year and a rear suspension was really the only thing I felt like that bike was missing. So I think the Obsidian is sort of the completed model that is really a true all-terrain e-bike. One area that has some room for improvement is the motor's re-engagement after coasting or hitting the brakes. It kicks in really quickly when you're first getting moving, but once you're up to speed and you do either of those things, it takes about a full rotation of the cranks to feel the power kick in again. 
That wasn't really a problem on flat ground, but it was more noticeable when I took the bike out in the dirt. You can adjust this somewhat in the settings menu, but I'd still suggest to Mach Wheel to use a more responsive torque sensor on the next version of the bike. On the nitpicky side, it would also be great to see a battery percentage to make gauging your charge level a bit easier, and an integrated taillight would be cool too, but those are both pretty minor concerns. Overall, what Mach Wheel has done here is really solid. This bike is set up well for use in just about any environment, and it feels really good to ride. So one thing we haven't talked about yet is the Obsidian's price, which I think takes what is already a really solid bike and pushes it into the territory of awesome. When it comes to the other all-terrain e-bikes we've reviewed, it's pretty tough to find something with this spec level priced below $3,000, and that's where the Obsidian is placed. The rear hub motor here definitely helps to bring the price down, but with that being a full thousand watts, you don't have to worry if you're gonna have the power to do what you need to do. This bike did a fantastic job across the board, and it proved that it has speed, uphill and off-road power, as well as respectable range and really solid brakes. So if you're looking for an adventure bike for overland rides or a speedy racing bike to play in the dirt with, we think you'll really enjoy what the Obsidian has to offer. And with this desert camo paint job, we think it'll make a really great hunting bike as well. Bottom line, we think you'll have a pretty tough time finding a full suspension bike with this much power for a better price anywhere else. We give the Obsidian two thumbs up, and if you wanna take a closer look for yourself, we'll leave two links down in the video description. The first will take you to Mach Wheel's website so you can check current pricing on the Obsidian, and the second will bring you to electricbikereport.com so you can check out our written review. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe while you're here. Let us know if you have any questions, and we will see you next time. Again, I'm John with Electric Bike Report, and this is the brand new Mach Wheel Obsidian.